Hello everybody, it's Netgear57, your virtual car friend, and thank you for coming back again for another rant. Today, we're gonna talk about the cold, hard truth of the Subaru WRX. <laughs> So on the last video, there was a lot of comments saying, you know, you can take those 240SX uh, lessons and, and apply them to any car. And you know what? Really, that's that's correct. They're right. Dude, I found a 240 Ver for only 10 grand. He wants, he wants how much? 10,000. No, no, dude, that's fucking dude, stupid. Dude, 240SX, bro. Convertible 240s are the most abnormal life choice you can make. What about drifting, though? No, dude, no. Bro, stance. They're fucking dumb and they're ugly. Don't buy it. Okay, yeah, you're probably right. I'll keep looking. All right, I'll talk to you later. All right, bye. So let's take that 240 video. Uh, if you haven't watched it, link down below. And let's build on that. Let's let's go on to the next car. And today we're going to be talking about the Subaru WRX. Now, just the mention of the name has eighth graders across the nation making head gasket and vape cloud jokes. But is it really that bad? The WRX is one of those cars that's been destroyed, just sent into, into oblivion by boy racers living out their rally car fantasies. And, you know, that's fine. It's, it's a fucking WRX. It's an all-wheel drive turbo sedan or wagon with great aftermarket support and it's super fun to drive but the big question is should you buy one and the answer is debatable you have to find the right one and you have to be the right person now it's, it's kind of odd in the sense that to own a Subaru, you almost have to be a Subaru guy. Now, again, I know what you're thinking. No, you can't do that, Ned. You, 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 how can you be a Subaru guy if you never bought Subaru? Now, I understand that's a weird statement. It's kind of a catch-22, but Subarus are quirky cars. There's just weird things that you have to learn about them and you have to be willing to do that. If you're gonna get the most out of the WRX, you've, you've gotta be willing to do the work yourself. That's gonna really take it to the next level. Now, don't, don't buy the car and immediately start putting all these sick mods on it that you know they're gonna make the car a fucking rocket ship and it's gonna make the coolest sounds whenever you shift. It doesn't work that way with Subarus. They're very, very finicky to the point that sometimes even just putting a higher flowing downpipe on the car, it'll damage the engine. It'll it'll blow itself up. This is really the main reason Subarus WRXs in particular got kind of a bad rap for being unreliable cars. It's not really the case, but what usually happens is some kid buys a WRX, goes on eBay, finds the first manual boost controller that comes up and buys it, slaps it on his car with no other supporting mods, cranks the boost, and when the engine pops, he's sitting there saying, oh wow, this car can sucks. Why did it blow up? This is not supposed to be this way. Don't blame the car. You have to do your research. If you're going to get mods, get them from reputable brands. Stay away from eBay trash garbage. Tune for your mods. Any mods, some mods, I guess some mods you can kind of get away with. You could probably put an intake on the WRX and be okay, but I wouldn't put an intake on the WRX. Do all that and the WRX will be able to take the punishment, take the extra boost in power, boost in boost, and, and it can be a pretty reliable car, believe it or not. You have to be the responsible one, though. Now, a lot of shops, they think, for some reason, that Subarus are like from another planet or something. Either they won't work on them, they don't want to work on them, or they'll charge you a whole bunch to work on them, which is kind of bullshit, and it's because of the engine. It's a horizontally opposed layout. It makes it things a little, a little more difficult to do maintenance on, especially the spark plugs, but really, the spark plugs aren't that hard to do. You're not going to do them like in five minutes, like on a D16 Civic, but they're not that bad. And no, you don't have to lift the fucking engine out of the motor mounts. Stop perpetuating that stupid fucking rumor. Also, stop putting fucking rally armor mud flaps on your WRX. Why the f do you do that? No, you're not fooling anybody. No one thinks that you're a rally driver. Um, actually, I do it to protect from rock chips. No, you fucking don't. Oh, and fucking hella horns. What is it with WRX people and putting hella horns in the goddamn grill? Stop. Stop doing that. Horns are meant to be heard and not seen. It's basically the fucking opposite of women. <laughs> if you're looking for a Subaru WRX, you know it's rough out there for a vape god, but now your search can be easier if you head over to collectorcarfeed.com slash WRX. We aggregate hundreds of Facebook Marketplace listings daily so you don't have to go digging. Search nationwide for the bug, blob, or hawkeye of your dreams, or those newer ones too, and only see WRX listings, no outbacks, no legacies, no bullshit just the WRX you want. That's collectorcarfeed.com slash WRX. Back to the video. All right, so on to the car itself. Which one should you buy? So like I said earlier, WRXs 
a lot of them have been hacked to sh by boy racers, poorly modified, kind of left out to dry, ridden wet and put away hard. And I'm being completely honest when I'm saying most of the ones that are for sale right now, I wouldn't f them with your dick. Your best bet is try to find a car that's as stock as possible. And that's gonna piss people, yo, why do you only like stock cars and that? Cause stock cars are reliable. Stock cars, you know where to go if something's wrong with it. If you buy someone's modified trash heap, you don't know what the f they did to it. You don't know what they wired to where, what parts they used, or how they set something up. You can mod it, that's fine, but you doing the work is gonna be the best way to do it because you know exactly what you did to the car. Another huge red flag, don't buy from somebody with a broccoli haircut because you know they're idiots. Uh, what to look for? Uh, probably the biggest thing to look for, one of the major items is uh, when was the time belt last changed on this car? That's gonna be something you wanna ask the seller. If the time belt's old and shitty, you buy this car and you drive home and the belt snaps on you, that's it. The f***ing motor's toast. They're interference engines. The valves and the pistons are gonna f*** each other to death, basically. And you gotta get a new motor. At minimum, a new short block. Pray to God your heads are good, but pretty much the whole long block has to be replaced. Now, that's not to say that a timing belt is a deal breaker. You can use that to your advantage to kind of whittle the price down. Timing belt job, if you take it to a shop, they're, I don't know what they charge now. It's probably over a thousand bucks, I would imagine. But you can use that in your favor, like I said. And if you do it yourself, you can save that money it'll be even more in savings when you do do the job make sure you're either using OEM Subaru all OEM Subaru parts or buy the Eisen timing kit and uh, that's basically the same thing I wouldn't use gates they started using Chinese bearings and shit like that so only Eisen or OEM uh, another thing to check on the car is the tires are the tires mismatched brands or mismatched sizes because that is a big no-no huge red flag do not buy the car that's basically saying the owner is, is either uh, an idiot or they simply don't care. Uh, Subarus, they need all the tires to be within something like 330 seconds tread wear. Now don't think that you can get one Firestone tire and one BF Goodrich and because they're the same size it's gonna be all good. No, it doesn't work that way because the overall size of the tire could be different even if between the brands, you know, on the sidewall it has the same size. So. Just don't do it. If the ad mentions anything about overheating, I mean, you can pretty much bet it's the head gasket. Now, don't go posting head gasket memes just yet. The Subaru issues with head gaskets are blown way out of proportion. That issue was uh, like in the late 90s, early 2000s. Subaru had switched from, I don't know, some kind of head gasket to another shitty head gasket. I think it had its best in it or some shit, the old one. Anyway, they switched head gaskets and it caused a lot of problems, but that's pretty much been mitigated now, like post 2004, I guess. And especially with the advent of the multi-layer steel head gaskets and the turbo models. They don't blow head gaskets at the alarming rate that CNN would lead you to believe. Now, with all that being said, it's probably the head gasket. And really, any kind of shoddy eBay mod is a huge red flag. It speaks volumes on the person that had it before. And do you really want a car like that? Like, quick release steering wheel? No thanks. Manual boost controller? No. The world is flat sticker on the back? Fing kill yourself. Oh, and if you're buying a car with a Cobb tune, make sure you get the access port. Cobb gets a bad rap, but I mean, they're not really not that bad. Just don't think that you can put a stage two tune on your WRX and think that you can throw any mod in the world on it because that's not how it works. Now with that, we circle back to the original question. Should you buy a WRX? Okay, well, let me ask you some questions. Are you an idiot? No, no. Do you have broccoli hair? No, no. Are you willing to learn about and care for a special needs car? Uh, yeah, yeah. WRXs are very fun to drive, have legitimate racing heritage, and can even be fun and a practical daily driver. There's a wealth of information on the web still, not like two Ford is where everything's dying. Websites like uh, like Naziok and uh, other forums like that, they're still active and they're still producing information and content. And the community is a solid C minus. As long as you're willing to take care of the car, you're not an absolute moron and you're patient enough to wait for the right one to come around to buy. I think buying a Super WRX is, it's an easy maybe thank you for watching guys uh hope you had hope you enjoyed this uh post down below what's the next car do you want me to talk shit about or make fun of or if you want me to make fun of your mom send me pics of her and we can do that make sure you go to collectorcarfeed.com and get your collector car feed stickers hot off the presses thank you for watching again guys see y'all later
Thanks for watching, guys. It's plug time. Do like Neckgear said and get yourself some stickers at collectorcarfeed.com slash store. And, you know, I'm not sure why he doesn't mention it more, but go to h-genuine.com, link in description. That's Neckgear's own clothing company. He makes shirts with the neoclassic preservationist in mind. If you keep it stock and clean, check his stuff out as well. If you're shopping for an old Subaru, head over to collectorcarfeed.com slash cars, where we have aggregated hundreds of Facebook Marketplace WRXs for you to peruse without the hassle of using Facebook. Facebook Marketplace. Check out patreon.com slash collector car feed for bonus content. Subscribe today for only a buck or just click on whatever's on your screen right now for more content. Collector car feed your virtual car friends now with over 6,900 subscribers. Nice!